And then Tony Schiavone brings out Will Ospreay for a promo. So within about five minutes of TV time, we went from Okada to Adam Copeland to Will Ospreay. And I realize Copeland's not like new. He's almost six months in, but it makes it very clear how the star power in this promotion has risen in very short order. So Ospreay gets a promo, and <laughs> he's, he's unbelievable. so awesome. I realize promos are more important in North American wrestling than they are in Japan, but I have never heard anyone talk about what a great promo Will Ospreay is before. I've seen a few. I, you know, they use, usually in New Japan, they just do like the backstage bits or the, the uh, press conference area, the press area. But God, he's incredible. So he thanks the beautiful people. Talks about Brian Danielson and his love of wrestling. Danielson asked if the Tiger Driver 91 was worth it to beat Omega. As the man who beat Omega, yes it is. Ever since I showed up in this company, the phrase that has followed me is restore the feeling. Bruv, I am the feeling. This match, he says, is what AEW is. The best in the world against the best of this century. And only one man walks out the winner. It's your life or mine. I don't plan on dying, bruv. This was fucking awesome. I could not believe how great this was. I could not believe it. I mean, I, I kind of could. <laughs> like, Caught me off guard. I mean, I knew he could do really great promos, but this was like at another level. And I just watched it and thought, man, what can he not do? <laughs> nothing. It's a short list. He, there's, there's nothing you could say where it's like, I mean, the only thing you could say is he won't move here from England. That kind of, you All know. Right. But I mean, other than that, it's like, how stupid could you be to under like not underpay but like in negotiations like downplay this guy's worth i don't want to hear the bullshit about how wwe couldn't do this they can do anything that they want okay i don't want to hear about well so and so would find out this how much he made we had that with brock lesnar for years that guy made more than anybody by multiples it's the same thing with roman reigns and if they wanted to pay him whatever they could if they wanted to let him stay in England, they could. The fact is, they didn't want to do it. And they lost this guy. And if I were them, I would feel stupid today. And uh, now, with that said, AEW has them. Or he, they have him. But, like, dude, you got this guy. You won the bidding war. You have him. Now he needs to be the centerpiece of your promotion. I'm sorry, but he needs to be the top guy. He's so preposterously over and the funny thing is they haven't even done anything with him yet like he has debuted he's had one fantastic match with Takeshi on pay-per-view which if you look at like the television audience and everything a fraction of them have seen that match mostly he's a guy that's shown up and been very likable charismatic and now has cut a great promo and he comes out and he's like the most over guy on the show so if this gets screwed up, I don't know what to tell you, man. If this is this one is one of those it's impossible to screw up. The only way to screw this up is to not push him. Because if you do anything with the guy, he's going to be your top star. And, I mean, he needs to win that title at Wembley, and away we go. And prior to that, he probably needs to win every other belt. But uh, he's your guy. Mm -hmm. Deanna Parazzo promo. It's not over between her and Tony Storm and Mariah May. Challenges them for a tag team match for Toronto next week. And between now and then, maybe she'll watch their tag match on Rampage. Jay White versus Darby Allen. So, as you would expect, Darby sells everything that happens to his back. Headlock takeovers, hip tosses, all hurts like hell. Probably not really selling. It probably really does hurt like hell. Also, it's Darby, so he's still doing like flip dives and death topes and all this stuff. So we come back from break. J uh, Jay is throwing really hard chops to the back. I'm cringing with each one of these. Darby makes his comeback, but misses a coffin drop on the edge of the apron. That sucks. He just barely gets in before being counted out. Is immediately blade runnered and pinned. Jay White is one. Afterwards, Jay offers a handshake, but it's a swerve. He sicks the guns on him. They're about to use Sting's own baseball bat to pulmonize Darby's leg when the acclaimed make the save. And they're all going back and forth, and it appears they've come to some sort of peaceful agreement, but Billy Gunn gets in Jay's face, so Jay gloms him with a chair. And we've already split up. Good! The Bang Bang Scissor Kid. Good! I, I mean, mean, it took too long! It was, it was overdue, but at the same time, it's like, I invested that much time into them doing absolutely nothing for months, 
for them to just break up and get right back I, to where I, we were I, when I, we started? I'm fine with it. Oh, man. Should have oh, happened weeks ago. You know what's funny about the whole thing? And then they destroyed Darby's leg. Oh, they did that too. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny about it is, like, Darby's leaving in a few weeks and he's going to climb Mount Everest. And that's that's storyline. They're talking about that. It's not a mystery. <laughs> Yet they also did an injury angle to write him out of storyline to it, go climb Mount Everest. It did seem redundant. Usually it's one or the other. It's either like, you know, this guy's going to climb Mount Everest. He's going to be gone for a while. Yeah. Or they don't tell you, and then they do an injury angle so then he can go climb Mount Everest. This, they did both. He's going to go climb Mount Everest. We're also going to write him out of storyline with an injury. So, hey, at least, you know, when he comes back, if he makes it, he can say, I climbed Mount Everest with a broken fucking leg. And just like Kurt Angle. And a bleeding back. Yeah. Oh, he's infected. It's very scary. Chris Jericho and Hook versus the Gates of Agony. Okay. Jericho's been doing the deal where he faces luchador luchadors. So he's Lionheart Chris Jericho, and they play his old thing music and no Judas. There's no luchadors in this match. He's still Lionheart. I assume because I think Lion Hook sounds cool. Well, yes, that's their that's their team name. But that also means you take away Judas, which is a terrible idea. Fans like that song. Now I'm a huge fan of the Gates of Agony coming out in their traditional royal garb of Cameroon and, and Samoa. That was awesome. So they mentioned here, I did not know this. Toa Leona has only been wrestling for three years. He started in, I think this is his fourth year. He's going on his fourth year right now. That's pretty impressive. He's still very, very new with this. I did not know that. So Hook gets a hot tag. He's suplexing Khan all over the place. Finally gets one suplex on the big man, Leona. And the gates bonk into each other. Turns into a double submission for Khan. And then uh, Jericho leaves to deal with uh, Leona. And Khan taps out to the Red Room. There were some clunky spots in here, but in general, a good old fight. In general, at the end of the day, we've got Hook teaming up with Chris Jericho. And... Which actually is funny based on what they did next, which is Jericho Take did a up. promo and he said, you know, you're a future world champion, but I need to know what it's like to stand in the ring, you know, across from you. So I challenge you for next Wednesday in a one-on-one -on -one match. Yeah. Looks like, let's do it. And we're going to find out how weird this really is tomorrow, Friday, because Friday is when they're going to announce the brackets for this tag team tournament. And I got a $50 bet with Semper Vivi. For some reason, he thinks these guys aren't in the tournament. All right. I don't know how he could think that, because not only have they been doing matches together as a team, but they got a goddamn team name. They're, they're Lion Hook. Yeah. How could they not be in this tournament? So I think they're going to be in the tournament, but also have a singles match, which is just weird. But we'll find out more tomorrow. Maybe they're not going to be in the tournament, but I just I think they are. So this is just kind of bizarre. I guess I hadn't thought of it. It would be really weird now if they're not in the tournament and the Gates of Agony are, for example. Well, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, They've got to be in the tournament. Mm. Renee interviews Kyle O'Reilly. He's coming back after two years, wondering if, he, wondering if he can still hang with the deepest roster in the history of the sport. This guy is just so... Oh, man, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can still hang. I don't know if I've got what it takes. And I've got to go do this all on my own. And I'm like, you lying son of a bitch. <laughs> You're going to fuck somebody on Saturday. You and the Undisputed, you're all going to be in cahoots. That's what I fully expect to happen. I mean, it could. It would I, fit don't, with these guys. I don't buy this fucker for a second. Seems like a long trip to make just to screw Brian Keith. Hey, you got to screw somebody. I guess that's it. So he's, he makes his case and then, Kyle! Which you haven't heard in a while. Roderick Strong screaming someone's name. But Roddy comes in says, you want to do this on your own? Do it on your own. And he gives him a big old hug, and the kingdom fist bumps him, and they leave. And Kyle seems to realize he has made a huge mistake. Actually, you know what they could do, which actually is what I would do, is Kyle needs to beat Brian Keith because of something the Undisputed does, but he needs to act like he didn't want them there, mm. or this is all bullshit, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so you kind of build it up for a while where he keeps winning because of them, but he's pleading innocence. And then finally at the pay-per-view, whatever they do, they all fuck somebody and and go heal. That's I think I'd do it that way. So you the, the long drawn-out thing where you get a sure, series yeah. of... Well, it's not that long. I mean, it's the end of April. We're not that far away from the pay-per-view. I see. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, 
WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.